and welcome to Gear Off Farms. In today's video, we are gonna be doing something very exciting. We are gonna be trying out this brand new Ranch Works pasture aerator. As for the specs on this specific aerator we have here, it is the 12 by 36 SB. So that means it's a 12 foot wide unit with a 36 in diameter drum. It's a single drum and it's uh, the draw bar model. They also sell these as a three point and as for other options we have, we also have a rear draw bar if we wanted to pull another implement behind this one like a like a drag or a, or a harrow or a fine tooth harrow, something like that. A week or so ago now, we received this aerator and we assembled it and it went together really nice. And uh, so far our first impressions are, we like it. We, uh, it's heavy built, it's a solid looking unit and uh, now we're gonna put it to the test and, and make sure that's the case. And right away, I want to point out again that it's made in the US, which is uh, very important. So we're going to head off to one of our fields that we just harvested hay off of yesterday and we're going to try out this pasture aerator. We're going to do some compaction tests and maybe a water runoff test and put a couple test strips in place to see the, the long term effects of this unit. So thank you all for watching the video. Let's head to the field and try out this aerator. Out to the field that we're going to try out this pasture aerator on and to give you a bit of a background on this field so this is one of our older hay stands behind me here and we just harvested this yesterday our hay stands we normally keep them in uh, hay for five plus years or so and then we rotate them out into corn for two years and then back into hay and that's in order to dig up that soil and revitalize it but this unit right here might allow us to prolong those hay stands even further along with our dedicated pasture ground and kind of revitalize that in a, in a permanent pasture situation or a permanent hay stand situation where we don't have to dig it up and start over. Because this aerator right here acts as a true no-till system. These heavy six inch blades impact the ground not only cutting the root system and allowing for better water infiltration and air infiltration, but it also breaks up a lot of that compaction and, and revitalizes the field without completely rotating it out of hay. So the key things it does, helps with aeration, water infiltration, and breaking up that compaction and encouraging new growth. So the first place I wanna test it here in this field is our main entrance. We're coming in and out of here a lot, so I want to come in here and uh, lay a test strip right along our highly compacted area in the field. We got one of these handy dandy compaction uh, probes, I guess you could call it. And we're going to try it out here before and after, see if we have a difference. And to do that and to test our compaction, even though it's pretty obvious there's compaction, we can do a water test along with use this compaction probe to test before and after and see what type of fracturing and and uh, root disturbance I guess you could say that we're doing and before I get started here with the the trial and making these test strips I wanted to let you know that they recommend using this unit in a, a very dry scenario you want to have at least a, a week of dry weather the drier the ground is the better this aerator does at fracturing deep down into the soil and breaking up that compaction and that's where this unit differs from other aerators is that other aerators, especially the, the smaller uh, spine tooth aerators, they almost need a, a damper surface in order to do any puncturing. But these highly durable, strong six inch blades need to be run aggressively over some, some harder ground and uh, really get that impact. So we've had about a week of dry weather here now, even though we had a really wet year to start off with. So we're gonna put this thing to the test now and 
see what it can do for us. So we're in the entrance of the field now and to show you how this uh, compaction tester works for those of you that haven't seen it. So we got a gauge on here and the one line is labeled large tip and small tip. We have the large tip on because we have some uh, more mellow soils, I guess you could say, compared to certain parts of the world. But we're gonna try this out here and we're gonna get a good look at the gauge here to start off with. Putting a lot of pressure down, a lot of force. So very compacted right here, which is what we expected. So now to compare to a, a field that isn't compacted, I'll go right along the fence line or out into the field here and we'll see how mellow it is. So here in the fence line, other than putting the fence in, we really haven't driven here. So we'll try it out. Jeez, no issues at all. Didn't even get up to 100, 150. And we got really deep. Which when it comes to compaction, that's what we want. What we're seeing in the fence line there. That is very nice and mellow soil that allows for uh, fibrous and, and uh, flourishing root system, which equals yield and a better crop. So obviously that's what we want. So we're going to try this out here and uh, see if we can see any immediate results with this aerator. So we made our first pass along this highly compacted part of the field and uh, now let's see if uh, we can see any immediate results. You can see we can already see a result. It seemed like it was 50 to 100 psi better, especially when you tested right where that blade made its impact. And I could see where, especially after a rain and that water infiltrates, you know, repetitive use of this long term where you could really see some results here. So definitely helps with compaction without having to completely till up the field. I like what I'm seeing here when it comes to battling compaction. We're going to go up in a, another place on the field and do some more tests. And now I'd like to demonstrate how uh, this helps with water infiltration. So I've been able to do a bit of playing around with this thing. I made four passes as a test strip here. As you can see, and for those of you that uh, have been part of the channel, you know that uh, we farm some really steep ground, which is where I'm excited to see this thing in action long term, because this is going to help a lot with runoff. And hopefully I'm able to demonstrate that nice for you guys. 
there's a little water left in this drum and where I'm going next I don't want any water so I'm gonna let some water out of this and I'm gonna let it out on our our non aerated section along with our aerated section and uh, see the difference see how much water infiltration we have So in a way that simulates a really heavy rainstorm. Obviously most of your rainstorms aren't going to be coming that hard, you know, like a fire hose out of there, but it, you still are, you're getting the idea that we're, that we're not getting a whole lot of water infiltration. It, it starts to run for a while. And if you look at even just the soil where it impacted, it, it definitely does some washing of that topsoil, which is what we want to avoid. So I don't know how noticeable that was on camera for you, but it definitely washed way less and it definitely slowed it down. And if anything, this is slightly uh, steeper of a slope compared to where we did the initial trial without aeration. So we maybe went, should have brought a tape measure, get more precise here, but from where the water hit the ground, maybe 10 paces to where the last point I see water and most of it caught already at pace number five here and then we just had a slight stream now let's go over to where we didn't aerate it about 20 paces so that is a huge difference and there's way more topsoil washing compared to the aerated ground and my camera woman can uh, put in her two cents because she was standing roughly in the same spot for both of them and she really got splashed on the on the first one that that ground was hard enough you know that top layer to where it <laughs> splashed up all over you and she's like I, I can't stand that close for the next <laughs> one and it wasn't even an issue with the, the aerated soil no nope. so water infiltration that's a win for sure that's that's very noticeable with this unit so I'm gonna let the rest of this water out and we're gonna go try this out on some of our permanent pastures and really see what this thing can do. I'm excited to try it out on this type of ground. This is our really steep ground and this is the ground we can't rotate into other crops. So if we can revitalize that with something like this, that would be a huge win. Okay, we made it back to the farmyard and talk about impressive. I was told to run these blades through the gravel to sharpen them up. And uh, not only are we sharpening them up, but talk about a true test of uh, durability. I know with a normal tine aerator, we would have bent all of them tines right up. They aren't kidding about these blades. These are some really durable blades. These six inch ranch tech blades, and they offer a, a lifetime warranty on these blades which uh, is really reassuring. I don't think a guy's gonna break these off. They said that if you hit a rock, it's gonna break the rock or it's gonna lift the whole implement. And I think I seen that on the other field. I, I thought I felt it hit the, the bedrock below on the top of the hill. You can kind of feel the implement jolt up and I don't see any damage to any blades. I don't see any broken off. So very impressed so far. So we're gonna head up on the hill I'll probably throw the drone up for you guys, get some cool shots of this in action, and we're going to go test this out on the pasture.
is really steep here. I mowed this off like a week and a half ago. And, and on the knobs, I mean, it's there's a lot of growth up there already. So I think we're going to go where, where we did the mowing. We're going to see some results if, if, if we do, you know, it'll be easier to tell the difference being that it's freshly mowed off. And it, it's it lays pretty even. There's some dips and stuff in there, so... I, I got a feeling that that might change a little bit how consistent it's going to be right across. But I'm excited about this because I don't want to do any kind of tillage back here. You know, one thing it is, if we were to renovate this, we'd have to fence it away from the cows. Probably have to use electric fence, you know, until it grows back and all that. Which I think something like this is uh, probably better that it still can stay pasture even though you actually try to do something with it. the pasture now trying it out and this is some of our steeper pasture that we have that we can still drive on yet we have steeper pasture than this but it's hard to get across it with a tractor as you can tell he uh, is going over the stuff that he mowed recently and he's moving at a pretty decent speed that's a, a key point with this aerator versus the competition is that they want you to run this at a faster speed you're almost better having less weight and moving faster especially with those blades you can really make a hard impact onto those drier soils and really affect some compaction deep down in and and increase the the root growth by cutting those roots and and stimulating the the root layer but back to the speed and the actual use of this pasture aerator. They recommend that you pull this aerator around 10 mile an hour, essentially as fast as you can go with the terrain you're trying to pull it across. Compared to other aerators, it's, it's normally five mile an hour or less. 
you know, three to four in some cases. So, so that's a true testament about being a, a very efficient machine and you can cover a lot of ground in a hurry with this pasture aerator from RanchWorks. And I wanna stress that this is a true no-till system. This is a great way, especially for people like us with dedicated pastures, to uh, revitalize those pastures. I'm really excited to see the long-term effects of going across this ground. I imagine even within a month or so, we should see a difference. All right, so let's head back towards the yard and, and get another look at that aerator. Okay, we are back down in the yard. And uh, another thing I wanna mention is how durable and uh, sturdy this landing gear is. These tires are uh, multi-ply aircraft tires, so uh, I don't see these uh, causing us any issues. This landing gear and the tires are definitely built and set up to handle the weight of this drum, even if it was fully filled with water. So moving from field to field, going down a paved road versus gravel road, I didn't notice any issues or differences. So uh, they definitely got it right when it comes to their, uh, their travel setup, that's for sure. Another thing too, this is definitely a, a low maintenance machine. Definitely a, a grease and go type of machine. You got two bearings on each side. You got your hydraulic cylinder and hydraulic lines and that's about it when it comes to uh, things to check. You know, you got your tires, but even then those are some pretty durable items to, and simple to where uh, this is a, a grab and go type of machine. So there you go. You got to see the Ranch Works Pasture Aerator, the 12 by 36 model, single drum in action today. It was good to put this aerator to the test and uh, I imagine if it stays here long enough we might be putting it in another video for you guys. You'll have to let me know down in the comments if you want to see more of this aerator in action. I'm excited to see the long-term effects of it so make sure to stay tuned for that. But I want to give Ranch Works a shout out for sending us this unit and letting us try it out and uh, put it to the test and showcasing it for all of you. If you want to learn more about this aerator, you can go to ranchworks.com. I'll throw their uh, URL down in the description along with their phone number if you wanted to learn more. Or you can just Google RanchWorks. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for sticking to the end. Make sure to leave plenty of comments down below, and uh, we will see you next time.